Hey everybody, welcome back to my Anime Rat channel. Today is going to be a special showing of Wonder Egg Party, episode 13. It's almost an hour long. It's been a little while, so I'm a little off on things, but last episode we left off with uh, Rika was going pretty much uh, overboard, Kawaii, because she lost her little pet companion by, I think it was Dot that killed it, but it could have been Hyphen too. I really not sure which ones and I don't want to go watch them all, all over again um but yeah she's going a little off the wall Aka and Ura Aka are a little bit worried about her because as they said they needed them to basically stay sane or they'll go off and join um basically Frill uh they needed like champions for their cause we also had last episode with last episode or the one before that with I, she went to talk to Sawaki about Koito and her death and if he had anything to do with it or he knew why. Everybody has their own theories. There's nothing to go off of this anime with other than just each episode. Um, many people theorize that they had some kind of uh, relationship going on. Sawaki was abusing her and she couldn't take it any longer. I'm kind of of the mind that Koito wanted him, and as a teacher, he just couldn't return that. And so, because she didn't feel like she could find that kind of thing anywhere else, she killed herself. Because they were having, like, after-school sessions where he would paint her or draw her. And so I feel like she kind of got used to it and felt like this was a type of love. Um, because this isn't uncommon. This isn't uh, something that's happened to before. So that's kind of my take on it. Uh, I could be wrong too. Everybody could be wrong for all we know. It could be solely something totally off the rails that nobody thought of. So this episode hopefully closes up quite a few things. Because we know Suwaki is in love with Ai's mom. Or at least he portrays that. Uh, some people think it might be closer to get to Ai. Uh, I'm not sure. I hope not. Because uh, they make it seem like it so much that it could also just not be it at all. We also have like Nehru. Nehru uh, knows about the dream type states. Knows about the reanimations or what it's all about. I really don't think they're reanimated. They're not being brought back into the real world. It's more like a, a coping mechanism to where uh, our girls are grieving and these dreamlike states are them trying to move past that. Um, Aka and Ur Aka made their own child. They're trying to figure out, I guess, some kind of way to make immortality a thing or to make an immortal AI a thing. Because they made Frill, and then uh, after Frill, Frill kind of went a little haywire. They had Hermari, and Frill killed Hermari, as well as her mother or would-be mother, Azusa, uh, by throwing the radio or the toaster or whatever in the bathtub and frying her. And then we had a really violent moment with one of the Akas, I can't remember which one, kicking her down a stairwell and then shoving her in, like, some little compartment. And we learned later on that she somehow created Hyphen and Dot, who are these things that go into the Dreamlight States they're really powerful. Uh, they killed the little minions that they were given, uh, the girls were given pretty easily. But with that being said, this is almost an hour long, so let's get on to this episode, see what happens, and I'll see you there. Alright everybody, here we go. Odds are they're going to give a little bit of a recap, because it has been a little while. Just a little bit. But for the real fans, probably don't forget much of it. Her eyes are so beautifully animated and it's just so pretty. Like this whole anime, the art style is just gorgeous. I briefly thought because of this moment here that Koito actually loved Ai. Yeah, that's the big question, isn't it? Like I'm guessing the animators and the people who made this didn't think it would have the reception that it did. So they fell short of the episodes and didn't really complete it. But it got such a, a reception, like people loved it so much that they needed more time to really flesh out the story. 
and the art style of the villains is incredible like the way they animated them and made each of them look they look grotesque and weird but it's also really interesting and intriguing probably just something she felt like she couldn't talk about or it was just random like it just suddenly happened maybe koya really didn't kill herself i mean there's so many different variables in this show that everybody's just really unaware of I wonder if Rika will ever find out who her dad is. Isn't that kind of one of her dreams or goals? Like, why Nero's sister tried to kill her? So many questions. Well, obviously not. We're crying. Not a big fan of the recap in the episode like this. Like, it, I don't think it's really necessary. Because you would just want to be randomly watching the show if you didn't know these things. It's a really short series. It doesn't take long to rewatch if you forgot. Right? And I really thought she was up to something. The secretary. I really thought she was uh, doing shady things behind Nero's back in this whole time we were Now that's a lot of damage! That's a massive scar for just being stabbed. Pretty sure I've said this before, but I don't think she just stabbed her. She like stabbed her and just like pulled the knife down or repeatedly stabbed her in the same area. Cause that's a massive scar. Like the fact Nero lived through that is crazy. Literally, just like Flatliners. Might have even gotten a little bit of inspiration from the show, the movie. I get the feeling the animator or the creator of the show really likes the dual eye colors. Man, this is going to be a massive recap too. A few moments later. Oh, this is kind of weird. Reminds me of Rum. Shadow's house talking to her finger. So like half of this episode was filler, just a recap. So I don't know if this is gonna really get too much. Alright. Half the gang's back together. Well, if it's gonna snow, it's probably pretty cold out right now. Maybe we should put a coat on? What's in the box? Just some random gift that was left at her house? Oh, the rat. Oh, wow, that's pretty cute. A little sticker on her phone. Is she not gonna answer? <laughs> left Wait, so? nope okay right That's why she asked her to jump with her the last episode. So I had nothing to do with it. This isn't right! She was making false a false accusations against people? Against like previous teachers? Is Koito, not the person we thought she was? Uh, this is weird. 
So, Poito was actually mean to her? Hmm. thing I can think of is this is a dream uh, maybe like uh, Frill is trying to warp her sense of reality turn her evil to her side or I has been remembering things backwards trying to cope with all the grief by making things seem like they were better than they really were uh, not sure They really did come back to life, but they just totally forgot about them. Oh, you're so close. She may have forgot about Kawaii. Koito forgot all about I. They've moved on. It's like, it's like, um, it's like Nero's friend said it in the other episode uh, during the recap where you got a brief mention of it. The alternate versions of them. So an alternate version of her probably came back and just never had the interactions the previous one did. So it's not actually them. It's like an alternate reality version of them. My show is, is got it. How would that affect Nero then? Like, is her sister, would her sister just totally forget her? Get some ending where they all forget each other and just move on. No! Does Nero kind of look like she just left? Like, okay, I can understand Boito from getting an eye, but why is Nero acting so standoffish? Like she didn't reciprocate the friendship. Excuse me, why? So that Nero is a clone and Nero is actually gone. Okay, were they twins? alternate reality one wow that's a pretty powerful nose that's dead girl right like I said alternate realities 
Right. Okay, so a little clarification there. So the Koito was a different Koito. The shimmy was a different shimmy. And this being Nero's sister, it's a different Nero sister that probably didn't even stab her. But they're from alternate realities. So what happened to that version's reality? Like, did they just suddenly die? Were they practically kidnapped from their reality to this one? Frail. She's like frill. So Nero is a machine. Look at the way they did this. That looks real. So they animated them on top of real scenery. Yeah, they want to see the real ones. Like these facsimiles, these alternate reality versions aren't the people they cared about. This is almost like cruel. Is she trying to call her? Or is she I calling Nero or is Nero calling I? I can't tell. <laughs> well, well the phone's definitely toast now. No, she ain't crying about that phone. Did she move on without Nero? Was that Nero trying to call her and she moved on without her? Wow, literally what I didn't want to happen, happened. And it seems a little rushed. We never, like, moved on past Frill. What happened with Frill? What happened with Kawhi? Her going kind of ballistic. And she has, obviously, I guess, no, nothing to do with her friends. She just left Momo, Kawhi, Nehru, like, just... Fuck them, right? This is... I, it better get better than this, because this is bullshit. So, uh, she about to know what they're one? She going to Uraka's or Momo's? Yeah, Uraka's. The other ground basement. Okay. Yeah, she's the one that left Nero. Nero, I mean, Nero left, but Nero tried to get back a hold of her. All right, people. So I kind of figured something like this would happen with an episode like this, with a series like this. You get answered questions, but then with the answered questions, you get more questions. I'm not a fan of this ending at all like i just throwing the phone out the window 
because Nero was actually trying to get back in touch with her makes no sense. Uh, they're friends, and she was trying for the longest to get back a hold of her. So when she finally calls to reestablish that connection, I just yeets the bone out the window instead of talking to her. So, okay. Then we've got a few answered questions. The saved individuals that were killed earlier in the ser series, you know, the friends of our main cast, are alternate reality versions of themselves. So, as I stated in the episode review, or as I was watching, where did they come from? Or like... Did they die in their world and they get resurrected into this world? Were they just taken from their world and placed into this one against their will? Were they asked if they wanted to come over, perhaps? Uh, things weren't going so well in theirs. Especially with, like, Nero. Okay, Nero's is a, kind of a special case. Uh, Nero's sister, I take it, is a human. And... They replicated uh, her and basically made a better version of Nehru's sister and Nehru. And she couldn't handle that. So that's why she stabbed her, tried to kill her, ran to the bridge and jumped off. Which is a good reason why Nehru is still alive. Because she's essentially a robot. So she wouldn't be really easy to kill. She has a fleshly exoskeleton or skin kind of like the terminator so it takes damage so when she stabbed her it scarred up but she was able to survive the injury so the end of the series basically what happens is what i didn't want to happen which is they parted all ways and just forgot each other basically and that's what happened and then at the end we get i saying you know what uh, I've moved on. I went to a different school. We really don't get a whole lot of closure with Sawaki. Apparently, I guess since they moved away, the relationship with him and his her mother just went away. Uh, but he basically essentially said that Koito was making rumors up about teachers. So she made some crap up about one teacher in a previous school. She transferred to this school. And then started trying to make crap up about Sawaki. Throwing out a whole bunch of claims that right before she died. And it seems like she slipped and fell and died. Um, so she's not the person we thought she was. That said, she's not the Koito we saw at the end. That didn't remember I, Because she still had the real Koito... I believe had feelings for I and really wanted to be like a friend of some sort to her. So there's that with Koito. Uh, but I says she wants to see uh, Nero again. So she goes back down to the Aquas basement, starts buying eggs to find her again because she's convinced that Nero wants to see her. The Nero she knows. She didn't die though, did she? Because I, I feel like that's the only way that she would be able to see her through this unless uh it's kind of like um how Nuru saw Kotobuki uh I can't remember her name the alternate version girl that she knew um because she she kept going through these dreams and eventually ran into her at one point so maybe that's what I was trying to do is find a point in time where they just cross paths eventually which would lead me to believe somehow that Nero's dead. And I don't think she is. Because she called her. So like I said. A, a series like this just leaves you with questions. You get answers but you have more questions. So now I just want more episodes. But unfortunately I don't believe that's ever going to So let me know what you all thought of the episode people. Um, let me know if you all have any alternate theories or ideas as to what's going on. And I will see you all next time.